Welcome everyone to the Rainmaker Podcast. I'm your host, Earl Hall. We've got Moon Thomas with us, an ultimate agent contestus, contestant, if I can get my words right, and we've got her right here with us. Let's talk about it. Moon, my hey, goodness, girl. it is so good to have you here, girl. Um, man, I, well, you know, you're famous now anyway. Um, <laughs> but, uh, okay. from the ultimate agent, everybody knows who you are, but I, you've been blowing up social media, right? You've just been being, I mean, a beast on social media with your presence on there. I can't get away in my Facebook feed. Moon is always doing something, but I got man. one question for you. I'm a mess with you. I'm a mess with you. Okay. It's public now, right? <laughs> Oh, you was wrong for that. But yeah. Oh. Apparently you watched the whole episode. Yes. For those that don't get the joke, you gotta go watch Ultimate Agent and you will get the joke after the fact. What you had apparently not been using, you know, social media as a life insurance agent or anything like that before the whole Ultimate Agent experience. But but I always, and I've never asked anyone this question, but it's like, why did you not have it public? Like your, your personal Facebook, why wasn't it public? Was there a reason? Yeah, it's, it's a huge reason. Um, I mean, I was working in healthcare. I was actually working okay. in a job before this contest and I just had some nosy coworkers. Like I really didn't, yeah. like I didn't need no new friends. I didn't want to talk to them outside of work, right? <laughs> I get it. I get it. So, My wife honestly, is the same way. I'm just saying, honestly, it used to be, always be like, oh, I, I want to connect with you outside of work. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know, mm -hmm. so I just blocked everything. And then just think about how long ago you created your Facebook. It, oh, my gosh. Page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I never look at my settings every five minutes. And just so you know, Earl, I mean, you know, the story, <laughs> like I quit yeah. my job. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the whole story didn't come out. It. I actually wrote my resignation letter on the plane going oh to Missouri. Oh going my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Moon, t yes. okay, t tell us about that because what does that feel like? I mean, you don't know anything yet, but uh, tell you, t t what does that feel like? Um, I honestly, it, it was something that I knew I had to do. Mm -hmm. And if you keep waiting for the right time for anything, it's just never going to be the right time. Yeah. So I just yeah. felt like it's like now or never. If I don't do it right now, when am I ever going to do it? And technically, I knew I couldn't get off work. I mean, anybody who's working in healthcare right now, you know that oh we're short staffed. You know, everything is getting denied. PTO is getting <clears throat> denied. Um, you just, I mean, mm. it's, I had I had COVID back in December. Oh my goodness! My daughter had it. I had it. My husband. He had all the symptoms, but he never tested positive. And they were still asking me if I'm going to come to work. And I'm like, with COVID? Wow. <laughs> wow. So it's like, I just knew that there was no way for me to go to this contest if I just didn't pull the trigger. But something, I mean, obviously, you know, there were hundreds, thousands of people that applied to to, to get in on the show. And you were one of the lucky ones to, to get in there, blessed ones, however you want to call it. Yeah. But... How long had you even been in life insurance? Like when you applied for the show? I <laughs> <laughs> so to really be honest with you, I really have been in life insurance about 12 years ago. Wow. My first sales job ever was with Aflac. I don't know if I can say that, but yeah, that's with what... Aflac outside sales, like business to business. And mm. that is, actually how I met my husband. Okay. <laughs> so in my mind, I only really needed to sell insurance so I can meet the love of my life, right? There it is. <laughs> then we got married and, you know, I just got a regular job and mm -hmm. then we had this baby and then like I started a whole new career in healthcare mm -hmm. and I literally had the job that most people can retire from. Like if I... I was making good money. I had great benefits. The stability was there, but I just hated it. I get I it. Hated it. I, I've been there, girl. I, I've oh. been there. <laughs> I'm just like, how can people do this the rest of their life? I mean, it's just not for me. 
And I was really great at my job, of course, you know, because I loved helping the patients. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I felt like the company didn't appreciate everything that I brought to the table. Okay. And I just really, really just felt like, you know what? Everything that I ever wanted to do, I just been waiting for that that moment. And I think mm. right now is a sign that if I don't do it right now, it's just, it's never going to happen. So I just took the chance. Okay. I mean, you've so, been in insurance 12 years ago, but like, when did this iteration start for like life insurance? Okay. Like when so did this one start? I was in it 12 years ago, mm -hmm. got back out and just in October of 2021. So not even one year yet did I get back into the insurance game, but I was still working in my job. And okay. in my mind, I was thinking I'll do it part time. But honestly, I just didn't have time to really dedicate myself to it. Mm -hmm. And so I was just really writing like a referrals, you know, family, friends, right, right. warm market, warm market. Yeah. Yeah. And so honestly, when I saw the contest, I called my friend and, you know, she's like my accountability partner. I was like, I think I just did something crazy. Oh, and she wow. was like, yes. She didn't even know what it was. <laughs> you know, you just need that hype person in your life. Yeah. Be like, yes, do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just started getting real creative with it. I didn't even have a TikTok before this. Oh, my goodness. I did not even have a TikTok. And I found out my daughter, who was six, was doing TikToks on my husband's page. And so I was like, Ava, can you help me? Can you help mommy? There it is. Help? Yeah. And she just was like, yeah. And she was showing me. Like, she literally showed me. Wow. I mean, <laughs> you've, I mean, since, you know, well, the, the show has aired, you know, right. Um, your subscriber count on Facebook. Come on now. I see it in your face. W w what are we talking about here? Well, I mean, it, how has this affected, I mean, this growth on social media because yeah. of the, because of the reality show ultimate agent that you were on, how has that affected what you do every day. I mean, cause this is big. Like I said, I can't get, get away from you on my Facebook feed. I know because <laughs> you know what it is, is that for someone who was just never big on Facebook or mm -hmm. social media, I don't think I had like 300 friends when I got in this contest Okay. and didn't have TikTok, And I only had Instagram really for my, my podcast, which was just really going to be like a little hobby. It wasn't even going to be anything. Um, then like since the contest, like 4,000 people since April. Literally. Oh my goodness. Yes. And then I got the invitation from Facebook to monetize mm. and I was like, wow. So then I started just posting continuously since the contest because technically I didn't have to post anymore once I got in the contest, but I kept doing it because I'm actually getting, um, you know, more and more views and likes that can help me potentially have a passive income one day. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and you've become, for all intents and purposes, you've become an influencer, right? Really? Um, in this space. I mean, people pay attention to what you have to say. Oh I see God. it. I see the engagement. You know, I was watching, I think it was over the weekend, you were mm -hmm. on doing a live um, with some of the other contestants, they came on and, you yeah. know, it was like, I just sat there and watched the whole thing. Like I had nothing to do. I just said, you know, <laughs> Real, Oh my God. Like literally when I, um, you know, when I got eliminated, I told Cody, I said, what are you going to do now? Cody? Like your drama queen is off the show. Wow. <laughs> Oh you my goodness. Like, I know, Moon, you're so good for TV. <laughs> and that's why you're, you know, the lives that you do, you know, the videos that you post. I mean, because you'll go on at a random time. Hey, you know, you know, yeah. you know, whatever. And, and you just go. You have no, no fear of that. Mm -hmm. You know, how did that switch? Because you weren't doing that before. Was that something that you had to, okay, I'm just going to do this, or I'm afraid to do this, or hey, I can do this? Well, I mean, what was that like for you? No, honestly, that's just really who I am mm -hmm. and how I am. I just never did it on social media okay. because of my job. Gotcha. So honestly, this whole experience just really allowed me to free myself mm -hmm. and honestly be who I, who I am authentically. And then on top mm -hmm. of that, 
it gave me the platform. Like I literally feel like my whole reason for being in this contest was just to be discovered. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it, I mean, and you are a very good presence on camera. You, you definitely are Thank that you. you're engaging, you're funny, you're smart, you know, all that stuff that, that goes together. How has this, or has this affected your, your outlook on what you want to do, like with life insurance or, or how was this, inf- how was, since you've been on the show affected mm-hmm. your, your life insurance business? I mean, it's really affected me a lot because I did not realize how many people were inspired by my journey. Mm -hmm. I thought I was on a contest, right? But I started getting a lot of messages about how my courage has inspired. Um, Someone asked me if I was interested in mentoring new agents. I was like, wow, you know? Literally, I, you know, of course, people try to recruit you. I've been getting, oh yeah, try to get recruited, <laughs> and then you know, on top of that, um, I've gotten corporate sponsorships. So I actually had my first paid corporate sponsorship. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm still available to anybody who wants to. There you go. <laughs> Plug that girl. Plug it. And, um, <laughs> just outside of the insurance space, like I've done a couple of like promos for just something outside of insurance. So I think it's going to help me. Like you said, it's going to solidify me being uh, an influencer or a micro mm-hmm. influencer, so to speak, because my following is not that big compared to other people. Mm -hmm. But I think my organic traffic and engagement, like you said, is because I only like, say for instance, on TikTok, I only have like 1100 followers. Okay. Like one of my videos has almost 10,000 views. Yeah. So it can get crazy. It's almost like this. And I'll just put it like this. Everybody may be Follow it may not be following you, but they're always watching. Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, I'm like, I don't think you should really care about how many followers you have. You should have, you should be like how many people really engage with you. That's the metric. That is definitely the metric because they're called vanity metrics, like how many likes or, or, or something like that. But the engagement is what is important. The people that um, are, are commenting or, or, or watching, you know, yeah. that's the, the engagement metric that you're looking at. I mean, you guys on the show, you you were really in in a pressure cooker, right? As far as getting these things done over a period of what, four or five days. Yeah. And okay, this is, you had to learn a lot real quick. Right. Right. And then too, I don't think people, well, they might've realized this, but every single day, whatever you sold went back to zero. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like an accumulative AP number that yeah. got you to the winning part. It was every day. Everybody had an equal opportunity for being mm-hmm. uh, kicked off. And honestly, that day that I lost that social media challenge, mm-hmm. Michael won it. So he got like an extra $500 added to yeah. the AP. Mm-hmm. And that kind of gave him a leg up. But then I also had an application that I did, a whole application that didn't count for me. So I didn't get credit for one. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we probably were only maybe like one or two apps away from each other. But because of that, you know, that's where it all came in for me. I I was randomly going to the gas station on my way to like an appointment. (laughs) And I saw this couple sitting in their car and I'm like, hey, do y'all have life insurance? Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, I was looking for it though. And I'm like, hey, look at this is the reason. Hey. So we did a whole app like in the in the gas station parking lot. Wow. And something was going on with his bank account. And this particular carrier, unless they must verify something because it would not accept. And so, you know, I did um mm. call. I, I called the, you know, call a friend situation, mm-hmm. <laughs> a mentor. I called a mentor and I was like, can I take a credit card? And they were like, no. So I didn't. Wow. And maybe I should have. I don't know, but this is what happened. Well, I mean, e apps, you could they're usually, you know, with a bank a bank account attached, you know, with those numbers or a credit card. Um I mean, I saw the option for the credit card. Yeah. 
And that's why I asked because I wasn't sure if I, you know, if that was an option for me, but mm -hmm. it's either here nor there. I feel like maybe in a regular situation, you wouldn't take a credit card, mm -hmm. but for the, you know, the sake of a competition, maybe you should, but I'm not trying over. Well, no, cause I you're reaping, you're reaping benefits <laughs> from it. You know, right, that, that right. you're now reaping some benefits. You got monetized on Facebook, you got brand deals coming down, yeah. you know, <clears throat> Nike might be knocking at your door in a minute. Who knows? You know yes, what's so happening. Let's let's speak that in existence, right? You know, <laughs> but need some new shoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I mean, you got back in this at the end of you know towards the end of 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 last year. Your time on that on that reality show on the contest, Ultimate Agent. What was the thing you learned that you just never knew before? Oh, honestly, I really, really never knew how important making a friend was. Mm. Like, honestly, when you're knocking on the door and you're getting in, especially because I've never done that type of cold calling with with um, individuals. Like, it would be more like a business to business type. You know, mm -hmm. you knock on the door, like you're going to get through the gatekeeper, then like, let's talk yeah. to the owner. But like, when you're going to somebody's house, for somebody to be really comfortable to let you in the house, you know, I was surprised how many people were letting me in their house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm from Atlanta. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't never let anybody in my yeah. house. <laughs> and you know what? That's the part right there. There was another challenge where it was like a door knocking challenge. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I actually got in the door, but he let me in the door, but I still lost that challenge. And they said it's because I didn't ask to come in. Oh. But I, he let me in though. And the thing about that was they were saying you should have like kind of led in, like asking and led in. And then I'm okay. myself, not where I'm from. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't go in nobody's house unless they let you in the house. Yeah. But that, like I said, that's all good because I learned from that. And now I promise you, if I have to go door knocking, I'm going to ask that very clearly before I mm -hmm. make any type of move. I wouldn't just stand there and wait for them to let me in. Cause what if they don't, I'm just standing yeah. there looking crazy. So I did learn that and it, it stuck with me. Cause I was like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> How do you feel about the whole door knocking thing as opposed to maybe like just doing it over the phone? Like what's, how do you feel about that? You know, yourself as an I think agent. if it's an appointment, mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. If it's appointment, I do still get nervous just showing up to people's houses randomly. Mm -hmm. But if it's an appointment, I think they're expecting me. I think it, in okay. my opinion, maybe it should go a little bit more smoother, especially if they truly are interested. But um, I have realized that I am a grassroots marketer and I don't think that telesales would definitely just be, it's not going to be who I am. Like I'm not a Got you. marketer, you know, mm -hmm. I need to get out and I need to see people. So, um, it was some great information, some great breakouts that I attended during the 8% conference. Mm -hmm. And Leticia Jackson um, was just showing how she just used to make leads by going out in the community. And so that's exactly wow. what I did today. Today was the first day of school for my daughter. Oh. Um, I dropped her off at school and I ran into some people there. And I'm like, I joined the PTA. So like, hey, how can I talk to y'all about life insurance uh -huh. during the PTA? And then went next door to a new daycare that just opened up, met the owner. I was like, hey, are y'all having any back to school? Any things? Um, let me bring some snacks and refreshments. Let me do something for the parents so uh -huh. we can, you know, start getting some quotes or some policy reviews. So I'm doing a whole event with them next Friday. And I feel like I'm going to probably, you know, that's going to be my base. Warm market, um, face to face from that standpoint. Like, okay. that's how I'm going to make my friends. And you know, I mean, and you've got to know your niche, right? It's like, you've okay. got to know what fits you as an individual agent and what's going to work best for, for your personality and all of that. I mean, after coming off of the, the show and you're just coming off of 8%, you know, <laughs> you were there for a couple of days. I, I know that was amazing. Which did you like better? The show or 8% or the conference 8%? 8% was amazing. This is yeah. my first one, by the way. Okay. So I don't have anything to compare it to, but it did not disappoint. Um, I just love the energy of seeing everyone. 
And well, I can imagine it influenced how, I mean, coming back from 8%, getting back home, I mean, you got to be hype, right? It's like th that energy you were talking about, and you carry that back, and I'm sure it's influenced your what you're doing in life insurance. It's probably influenced what you're doing on social media um, yeah. with all of that, and I think those events really help inspire yeah. and drive. They Is do. that kind of how you saw it? They do, but even while I was there, even while I was there and leading up to 8%, as we, you know, stopped through a couple of states and saw family on the way because we drove, mm -hmm. you know, I was writing apps for them. I'm like, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be in life insurance and y'all trying to do a, a fish fry or a go fund me yeah. in the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let's look at what you have. Even if you don't get anything from me, let me just make sure that you have what you're supposed to have. Yeah. So I felt like I used it as like a tool a tool for me to get my perfect my you know my spiel yeah. and, and get down like my points that I want to make and it just really is going to help me drill down to my niche. My well, niche. you've got that type of personality. I mean, you probably look y'all getting some insurance today. So <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. I mean, literally, I um, I don't even care whose baby mama it was, but yeah. I was like, yeah. That baby, I don't have no insurance. Come on, let's do, let's get this done. You know, that's amazing to me. I mean, my wife and I, we have four kids, and we've always had life insurance on all of them. Still, still do, and it's always amazed me that people don't have life insurance on their on their yeah. kids. I mean, I just experienced. Um, I had to go to a funeral. My aunt, well, my first cousin died at forty four two weeks oh, no. ago. Right? Hey, go you know, that. and you know, look, he did have life insurance. You know, and he had. Well, he had six kids. I don't know where all them came from, mm. but you know, you find out stuff at the funeral. Okay. okay. <laughs> but just knowing that people don't want to actually realize you're going to die one day. Yeah. You know, we all going that way, you know, or and, you don't think that because they're children that it can happen mm -hmm. early. Right. Um, but honestly, you know, because I am a mom, a wife, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of I feel like women, um, you know, moms, women entrepreneurs, like those, mm -hmm. that's my market. Those are my people. And, you know, if you want to get something, you know, you got to, you got to get something established with the children if you want to change the next generation. So mm -hmm. we really got to, we really got to start with the kids. I know yeah. like the parents usually have insurance, at least through their job, um, you know, it doesn't make sense why it's just a few pennies and they don't add the family, but sometimes it just don't. Yeah. Um, but my thing is my grandmother always instilled in us to get life insurance outside of your job. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to, um, you know, kind of kind of instill in the people that I'm meeting now, because I think it's such a younger generation of people mm -hmm. having children that they don't think of that so much. You know, I'm yeah. an old mom. I'm an old mom. I was 40 when I had my baby. Oh my goodness! Well, yeah, you don't look so forty, girl. You know, I'm an old school mom. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you, thank you. I'm an old school mom. So mm -hmm. that was just that was just part of like how we were raised. But you know, okay. you meet somebody now, early twenties, having a baby, and they're not even thinking about that, mm -mm. Mm -mm. especially outside of work. You know. True. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, I want to. There's one thing I want to talk about. It's like, what is your experience like? Like when you on the show because a lot of agents have a hard time with the phone and with, and with rejection and people hanging up on them and man what's the kind of mindset that you go into dialing with that you think other e agents need to actually know you know because it's a real thing yeah um i really do think you have to kind of hang up and go to the next call. Like, don't hang on to whatever conversation just happened. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if people are being rude. You know, don't let that spill over to your next conversation because, you know, after so many no's, you're gonna get a yes. And right. so you don't want to have like any preconceived notions about the next call because somebody previously did something. Yeah. So it's like um, anybody. It just depends. It's, it's all about timing. It's like who who you're talking to, depending on what happened. And I like to say, put yourself in that person's shoes. Like if you're calling them mm -hmm. at a certain time and they might've just been rushing in and right. maybe it's dinner time. Like you just have to be understanding. Like I'm not super pushy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm just like, okay, I can call you back. I know some people are like, you're going to just stay on there until you get it. But that's to me, that's just not how. 
us southern folks don't act like that us southern folks don't do that you know (laughs) i mean i know you know if somebody doesn't want i don't i want the people who want me like i want to talk right 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 yeah you know so what's next for moon what do you have planned? I mean, let's let's fast forward to 2023. How do you how are you strategizing that 2023 and what you want that to look like? Well, so 2023, like it's really like right around the corner, seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now, coming off of eight percent, like right now, I'm really focusing so much on my branding and my marketing. Mm-hmm. Um my my whole social media has grown but like now i feel like i need to pull it together so um i'm gonna you know hire or you know get some help with making my brand across all the platforms the same Mm. so that you when you hear me like you know exactly what i'm doing and then the other thing is um i'm taking uh advantage of the speaker class that was offered during eight percent with coach bert and Mm -hmm. cody Um, it's a four-week class on how to how to be a speaker become a speaker and monetize that i feel like i do have a message yes um i do have a song to sing that um could help someone and just those outpours of uh people saying you know how much I inspired them. I'm like, I got to really answer that call. So um, I said something kind of crazy. So don't put anything out in the atmosphere that you're not willing to actually capitalize or, you know, like actually go through on. Because when I first came back from the contest, I was on the live and I said, if I ever write a book, it's going to be called Get in the Room. And now I'm thinking like, do I have a book to write? Like, I don't know. I, I might write a book. I don't know. What do you think your um or or have you come up with your brand name yet? Like like what you want to put across social media, like your at symbol. Well, I did just get a new nickname called Moon Tang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and it was funny. We were in like a, one of the restaurants in Dallas, and it's just all this big sign just sitting up there saying Moon Tang. I'm like. That's it, Moon Tang. So, Moon Tang Thomas. Um, oh my you know, goodness! I don't know where I'm going with that, but I did come up with like a Moon Tang tip of the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Moon Tang will be like my alter ego. Okay. Okay, like Sasha Fierce or whatever. Yeah. So okay. Yes. So, but I do think that. Um, so Moon Tang, in my opinion, is like that person who would do whatever and so like when we were on our way back from dallas we stopped at like a gas station and i'm like you know what if i'm a grassroots marketer that means i need to be giving out my cards to everyone so i took like this picture with my bonnet on because we was in the car Uh with like a whole like biker nation oh my god i love it i love (laughs) it look at it but you know i am i'm a comment everybody go on her page look for that biker picture and comment yes. that you saw it yeah, yeah so it's like you know don't be a secret agent like if yeah. everybody that you come in contact with at least has your card even if they don't need it they can let somebody else know but just imagine who you who you run into who mm-hmm. might need it and how many people they're going to refer you to and it was funny because i was like hey guys um is there any way I can take a picture with y'all? And I gave them all my card. And I was like, look, my name is Moon. I was just on the ultimate agent. And they're like, what is that? I'm like, it's a really awesome reality show. First one for insurance agents. You got to look it up on YouTube. And I was like, I was on there. And I'm just like coming back from the conference. I just wanted to give out my information. I'm licensed in this state. If you need anything, please call me. And I was like, can I get a picture from my social media? <laughs> See, what I love, you take action. It's like you take action. You know, you went from being private on Facebook (laughs) to being this, you know, up and coming um, social media influencer and and all of that awesome life insurance agent with a great attitude and everything else. I mean, I'm just glad to have you on the show. I mean, I I can tell you that right now. (laughs) I know that. I mean, I'm going to tag Cody on this one and, you know, you you know, I'll send it out. You can share it, you know, wherever you want to. But I mean, Moon, I I definitely appreciate you just taking the time, you know, to, to, to be on the show and, 
and all of that because i know you're busy you know you probably got some posts to do i saw you with your camera out so you probably posted something about yeah, that already I have to keep stuff. Actually, look, let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and smile for the camera You know what? Like, we I'm got like, it. What is so funny is I'm just a mom. I'm just a wife. You know, I'm just doing what most people do all day, and I'm just getting recognized for it. Though. Yes. Try to stay humble. Take advantage. Keep taking advantage of it, and keep doing what you're doing. We love you, Moon, and I just thank you so much thank for being you. here with me today. Thanks for and definitely i thank you the watching viewing listening audience for watching this episode of the rainmaker podcast make sure you subscribe to this channel and leave us a comment let moon know what you thought about what she had to say and we'll see you on the next broadcast be blessed <laughs>